Okay, I see we are just broadcasting live here. We're just getting started, getting everything up and running and set up for today's session. If you're already with us, welcome. It's good to have you here. You've reached the Imperial Business Analytics from Data to Decisions program pre-enrollment information session. The course starts on September 10th. Today is the 1st of September. It's about 6.30 Eastern Daylight Time in the Northeastern part of the United States where I'm dialing in. While we allow for others to join us and call in today's session, we'd love to hear from you as well. Um, so you'll notice at the bottom of your screen, there's a toolbar with several interactive options for you to communicate directly live with us in today's session. And one of those is a chat box. So you'll see that at the bottom, over to the right of your screen, there's a chat box there. And if you open up that chat box and you click on all panelists and attendees, you'll be able to send a message across that everyone on the line can see. So we'd love it, we'd love it if you said hello and let us know what geography you're dialing in from today. And if you'd like to share what brings you here today, what are you hoping to learn on today's session? One of the great things about coming into an interactive program such as this one here is your chance to guide and steer the ship and steer your own learning. Um, so let us know what, your, what brings you here, what are you hoping to learn, and give us an opportunity to address that as well. So we have our first message of the session from Nassim Matar. Welcome, Nassim. It's good to have you here, Dr. Nassim um, and Dr. T-Rod from Jordan. Welcome. Good to have you with us. So I'll be calling off as I, as I catch these chats, I'll be addressing and calling off as many of them as we can, but we'd love to know at the very least, what brings you here? What country are you dialing in from today? We have Joelle here from Nigeria. We have uh, Situ Gral from Turkey. We have Alex here um, from Malaysia. He's here to have a better understanding about the program. Um, Elena here from Malaysia as well, Izar from Malaysia, here to understand how this program is structured and how that can enable us to work together collaboratively. I love that, Izar. The, the peer collaboration in this course is a huge uh, course asset, a huge part of your learning journey. So we'll definitely talk about that a little bit later on in the session. We have Eslam here from Egypt, looking to start a step in a data science career. Is this the right course? Very good. So Thomas here, uh, together with a few colleagues from Geneva. Welcome, Thomas. Good to have you. Omen here from Scotland. We have uh, Thomas. Uh, Thomas from Geneva is hoping to learn more about the content of the program. Andrea here from Switzerland. Shaila from, let's see, uh, Jakarta. We've got Arison here from Hong Kong, looking to know more about the program directly from the school. You're going to hear directly from the school today. Uh, we have our, our, our faculty speakers with us, as well as our, our school directors. So we look forward to introducing those to you here shortly, Arison. Um, Andrew here from Ireland. We have Ricky from Indonesia. Welcome, good to have you. Johan from uh, Brunei, Brunei, we've got, very good. Rafe from London, Ashish here from Malaysia, Javier from Ecuador. So as you can see, we have a truly global audience with us today, uh, a, true, a truly global audience from all around the world here joining to learn more about this course. So we want to go ahead and get started. I'm noticing we're about four minutes past the hour, um, but that chat box right there over to the bottom right is going to be available for you throughout the session. You'll notice if you look a little bit over to the left of that toolbar, you'll also see a Q&A box. So this box has Q&A listed in it, and this is where you can place your questions that you'd like to see answered live by today's faculty. So you have these two interactive options. The chat box is an informal way for you to say hello, and then that Q&A box is where we want you to put your questions. We're gonna reserve the last 15 to 20 minutes of today's session to getting all of your questions answered better in that Q&A box there. Um, so without further ado, I want to go ahead and introduce you to today's agenda. Um, welcome. It's good to have all of you here with us on the call. Um, this is a, a picture here of Imperial College London you'll see on your screen. Um, and we just want to formally take this opportunity to thank each and every one of you for taking time out of your day to come and join and learn more about this course. So good to have you all with us. 
Uh, we're going to talk about the future of business today. You'll be hearing from Russell Miller. I'll introduce him in a moment. Um, he'll talk a little bit about the Imperial Online Program offerings. Um, two parts of our session today are sort of broken up into how you will learn. So what are some of those course components? What, is, what, what sets Imperial apart in the field of online courses? Um, you'll, you'll hear from the program faculty and he's going to tell us about what you will learn. So we have the how you will learn and the what. That's really going to be the, the, the breadth of our conversation here today. Uh, the program faculty will do a deep dive into those modules and really help you get, a, get an understanding of how this course is designed and what the pedagogy is. Um, finally, we'll talk about the program certificate and as promised, we'll get to all of your questions. So again, use that Q&A box. It's down there in the toolbar for you. Um, we're going to be moving through this material very quickly. So if you'd like for us to pause and go back to anything, or perhaps you have a technology issue and you've missed something and you want to come in and ask a question to make sure it's covered, put those into the Q&A box. We'll get to those here at the end of the session. The other thing to note before we move on today, we are recording today's session. So everything here is being recorded um, and we will be providing you with copies of the recording as well as a slide presentation after today's session. So stay tuned for more on how you can get a copy of today's recording and slide. So without further ado, our webinar speakers, these are uh, the stars of the show here today. We have with us Professor Wolfram uh, Wiesemann, who is a professor of analytics and operations at Imperial College Business School Executive Education. Uh, professor Wolfram, would you like to say, uh, uh, greet the audience here today? Hello, everyone. Uh, thanks uh, for tuning in. It's great to see so many of you from all different parts of the world um, attending this webinar. Um, I'm looking forward to spending the next hour with you discussing the contents of the program a bit and uh, most of all also addressing the questions that you may have. And I've already seen some of the questions in the chat box, so I'm uh, very keen uh, to, to discuss those and others later on with you. Um, it's great to have you with us, uh, Professor Wiesemann. We look forward to hearing a lot more from you here shortly. Uh, we also have with us Russell Miller, who's the Director of Learning Solutions and Innovation at Imperial College Business School Executive Education. Uh, Russell, would you also like to greet the audience here today? Uh, thanks, Marie. Yes, um, hello, everybody. Um, great to see you all um, joining us here today for uh, this pre-enrollment webinar. Um, there are indeed lots of you from all over the world, which is very exciting and um, I think reflects the global nature of some of our online programs, not least the business analytics program that we're um, going to focus on today. Um, so Marie, maybe why don't we start? Why don't you um, click the next slide and um, I can just kind of give the folks on the line um, a little bit of an overview of Imperial and um, some of the features of the program. Brilliant. Thank you. Okay. So um, uh, as Wolfram has already noticed, there are lots of questions coming in um, already. So we wanna make sure that we give you plenty of opportunity at the end of today's webinar to um, get your questions answered. And, and I'm sure um, many of those questions will uh, you know, be focused not just on the content of the program, but how you'll learn um, and you know, what sets uh, the Imperial Online um, approached uh, uh, you know, apart from those other um, schools out there. Um, but here's just kind of a bit of an insight into that, and, and I won't read this slide. Um, there's some useful information on here that you can read at your, um, your leisure, but wanted to draw your attention to um, one word, really, and that's fusion um, on this slide. So I think one of the things that you know, certainly sets Imperial apart, apart from our you know, reputation as one of the top schools globally, particularly in this field, um, is our ability to kind of you know, blend the academic rigor of programs with really practical application focused content. So, you know, you get that rigorous uh, academic underpinning of the material, but you also get a really clear direction and insight into how you can apply this learning in your day to day. And um, so particularly, I see some people on the line that are you know, looking to start careers in business analytics, for example, you know, much of this information uh, and content of the program is focused around, you know, what you, what you need to know from a day to day perspective in terms of uh, of analytics. So um, Imperial um, has a great reputation for, for ed tech and online learning and um, you know, you'll see on the right hand side here some of the statistics. So we're really highly ranked in um, the global uh, online learning world, not least for our MBA program for example, and the technology that, that underpins this program uh, that you'll be using and, and working with on a day-to-day -day basis is exactly the same 
uh, technology that we use for our online MBA program, for example. But it's not all about um, you know, online learning. This is a very human focus to it and um, you know, plenty of support from our team of learning facilitators uh, and faculty members um, too, to support you through your learning journey. Marie, maybe you could just click us forward a slide and we can just kind of expand on that a little. Yeah, great. So, so one of the things that we're really keen to uh, emphasize, um, if you just go back a couple of slides. There we go, thank you. Um, so one of the things that, that is you know, really key to um, the success of the program um, is the approach that we take to online learning. So I mentioned our uh, learning platform, uh, which is um, really fabulous and, and contains all of the uh, interactivity um, and kind of learning exercises that you'd expect. But one of the really key uh, components of the program is this human interaction that you have, not just with our faculty members, so not just with Wolfram and his colleagues, but our learning facilitators too, um, but perhaps most importantly with each other. So there's a, you know, you'll see from the, the, the range of people that have joined the webinar today, that really reflects the global nature of the cohorts that, that attend this program. So you get a really broad perspective of, uh, of kind of you know, different people's experiences from a range of different sectors and a range of geographies over the world. And that's part of the, the kind of the rich dynamic of the, uh, of the cohort that we really seek to leverage and, and, and kind of build into your learning experience here. So um, you know, online learning at the moment, not least because of the, the, the kind of global pandemic that we're you know, all um, experiencing and, and it's changing the way in which we work and, and live our lives. But you know, even prior to that, online learning was a major component of, of what Imperial offers. And our pedagogy that supports the development of online learning um, and its delivery, um, it absolutely offers the equivalent of our campus-based programs. So the same rigorous academic standards are there. Um, and uh, obviously you get to work with our world leading faculty in the same way as you would uh, if you were to join us on campus. So, you know, I um, really urge you to you know, be part of the Imperial community and, and join this program. It's a very successful program and um, the faculty that lead it, and, and I'll hand over to Wolfram very shortly. You know, Wolfram's been a, um, you know, right at the forefront of executive education and our um, development and delivery of online learning. And this program is one of the most successful programs that we run it's a very very popular program um, and we have some fantastic feedback from uh, previous uh, cohorts and uh, people that are now really applying uh, their learning in a day-to-day -day, um, environment so um without further ado let me just um, hand you over to wolfram and wolfram um uh will introduce himself and also just kind of talk through uh who else uh from the imperial faculty team uh, we'll be working with you guys on the program. So um, without further ado, over to you, Wolfram. If you have any questions around um, the how part of how this program uh, works in practice, we'll have plenty of opportunities to, um, to cover those off at the end. Um, thanks, Wolfram, over to you. Thanks, Russell. So <laughs> just a very few quick words about myself and uh, my colleague, Alex, who is going to uh, teach this program. I'm uh, personally a professor of analytics and operations here at the Business School of Imperial College and um, I also serve as the academic director of our on-campus master's program in business analytics. So I would say that I have a fairly good overview of what happens at Imperial in the analytics space. Um, I've been for many years fellow uh, of the uh, Imperial Business Analytics Center that we have here. Um, and I spent about the last 15 years of my career on analytics related problems. Uh, my main area of expertise is in decision making and uncertainty, but I've uh, been working a lot both in terms of research as well as in terms of consulting at the interface between machine learning, optimization and other parts of analytics. <clears throat> so that's a bit from, uh, from my end. Um, perhaps we go over to the next slide uh, so that I can introduce also my uh, colleague and friend Alex Ribeiro Castro, who's going to teach this uh, course with me. Um, uh, Alex is the director and owner of the of a data science consultancy called Faro Business Analytics, and he's also a part-time adjunct uh, faculty at uh, Imperial College London. He, um, just like myself, comes uh, from a, a mathematical background. He has um, his uh, master's and PhD from the University of, uh, Southern, uh, University of California at Santa Cruz in mathematics. Um, he has been uh, 
on the uh, on the on the research side for quite a while he held uh, visiting positions also in our math department uh, for for a long time um, but uh, alex is also has uh, has a strong feet uh, foot in industry he um, is uh, currently also uh, part-time working uh, for a financial service company uh, where he had some analytics group but he's also um, yeah, having his own uh, data science consultancy, as I was mentioning earlier on. Great. So that's about us. Um, let's uh, continue with what you will learn in this course. And uh, I would like to first answer uh, preemptively, if you wish, uh, one question that frequently comes up, and that's a very good question. And that is, if you look at Emeritus course catalog very carefully, you might have seen that there are actually two uh, fairly related sounding courses being offered, um, both involving me, um, namely this course here, uh, Imperial Business Analytics from Data to Decisions, as well as a machine learning course, Imperial um, Machine Learning for Decision Making, um, that I am uh, going to teach myself. So the, the natural question is, um, how, do you, how do we differentiate between these two courses? The course we're going to be talking about today gives you a broad overview of the analytics space. In particular, we're going to discuss how we can understand data, how we can make sense out of data using the tools of probability theory and statistics. We're going to uh, discuss how we can make inference from data, which is the classical topic of machine learning. We're also going to uh, discuss how we can make decisions from data, which um, is uh, basically optimization theory as well as operations research and we're going to uh, uh, discuss coding which is an essential part of analytics so we will provide an introduction um, uh, of uh, python one of the uh, i would say actually the lingua, fr lingua franca nowadays of machine learning uh, to you as part of this course the other course that i'm not going to talk about today um, is called imperial machine learning for decision making i'm teaching that course myself and that is a much more narrow and uh, somewhat in-depth course uh, this course will focus purely on machine learning um, it will be more advanced uh, it also has additional theories such as how to evaluate predictive performance uh, the fundamentals of uh, the foundations of learning theory etc okay but today we're going to talk about this course that I'm teaching with Alex, uh, which is about um, uh, which is about uh, imperial business analytics from data to decisions, and this course is going to be split into five different modules that I would like to discuss with you in turn now. From a high level, before I go into the details, modules one and two will be primers on the mathematics foundations and the coding, and then there will be three modules. Uh, that cover uh, respectively descriptive, predictive, and prescriptive analytics. All right, so let's have a look at the modules one by one. Module one is a math primer. We'll be covering the uh, basics of probability theory that we need for the remainder of the course. We'll be, uh, for example, revisiting Bayes' rule, which uh, some of you might have heard of before. We'll uh, be covering the law of total probability. Those things are uh, very important um, if you, if you um, are interested in a Bayesian perspective of machine learning, uh, if you later on look at things like naive Bayes, for example. Um, we'll be covering common probability distributions that we, that we frequently see. And we'll be uh, also discussing the famous uh, central limit theorem. So those are things we're doing in module one in the first two weeks. Module one is followed up by a primer on Python, taking uh, three weeks time. And uh, we'll really start from the beginnings here. We'll be covering how you can install Python. We use the uh, popular Anaconda environment for that. Um, we'll be discussing how to define and make use of variables in Python. Uh, we'll be looking at composite data structures such as lists, tuples, dictionaries, and so on. Um, and we'll also be discussing how to uh, define and use functions in Python. So those are the two uh, prerequisites, if you wish. We'll be covering them in the first five weeks, and then they are followed up by the, the actual content in, um, in descriptive, predictive, and uh, prescriptive analytics, starting in, um, in, week, uh, in week six with module three about descriptive analytics. 
<clears throat> in descriptive analytics, we'll be covering things such as uh, the difference between correlation and causation. causation. We'll be discussing um, how to estimate the problem parameters using maximum likelihood estimation. Um, we'll be discussing various statistical estimators such as the mean, median, mode, uh, mean absolute deviation, etc. We'll be discussing the important topic of outliers, the enemy of any machine learner, if you wish. And we'll be uh, discussing linear regression, which is really the, which is a statistical technique, but which also provides in many ways the foundations of uh, many concepts in machine learning. So that'll be module three. In module four afterwards, which is uh, coming up now, we'll be uh, discussing predictive analytics, which people uh, often call machine learning as well. Um, we'll start with an introduction. I'll give you an overview of uh, machine learning. What are the major dividing lines, supervised versus unsupervised learning, prediction versus classification problems, parametric versus non-parametric methods. And I'll guide you also through the overall machine learning process. So we'll be looking at the machine learning project also from a managerial perspective there. We'll then move over uh, to a couple of mainstream methods in machine learning, such as uh, nearest neighbors approach, uh, decision trees, support vector machines, and clustering. An important bit here will be that with each of these approaches, we'll be not only covering the method itself, the method, how it works, why it works, but we'll also cover fundamental concepts that reappear over and over again in analytics in each week. So for example, when we're going to discuss uh, nearest neighbor methods, we also discuss the issue of scaling and the so-called curse of dimensionality. We'll be discussing things like the, the split into training, validation, and test sets, as well as the famous bias variance trade-off. When we're talking about decision trees, we'll also uh, discuss the concepts of entropy and Gini index, as well as the information gain. We'll be discussing tree pruning uh, to, reduce, uh, to reduce variance. And we'll be discussing ensemble techniques, such as bagging, boosting, and random forests. Um, when we're discovering support vector machines, we'll also uh, discuss the well-known kernel trick, which goes beyond support vector machines. And we'll be discussing cross-validation, which is a very important uh, technique uh, that is used throughout, uh, throughout the field. Um, very important technique. Everybody uses it, but it's a classical example where I would say most people that I, will, that I would speak to, I think even though they are using it, they might not really understand why it works. So the important bit for us here in this course is always we'll be discussing how to use it. So you'll see how to use a Python, but beyond just using it in Python that you could just look up online, that's not a problem. We'll try to provide your intuition why it works. And we'll be in touch with you personally um, through live sessions, through, your, through various support staff to make sure that you really understand why things work. All right. Um, last part of module four is about uh, clustering. That's an unsupervised learning technique. Uh, we'll be covering both uh, hierarchical and k-means clustering, and we'll be assessing the quality of the clustering. All right, that's module four. Module five, the in principle, the final module, let's say the final content module, but it's followed up by something very important that I discuss afterwards, is uh, dedicated to prescriptive analytics. And what we're doing in these last four weeks is we're taking the process from analyzing data, understanding data, to taking decisions based on data. And that's, uh, we're, we're using uh, operations research or optimization theory for that. I will introduce you in that part to uh, the uh, methods of linear programming and integer programming. We'll be uh, discovering both techniques based on a range of case studies. And then we'll extract kind of the, the theoretical foundations for that uh, from, from those case studies as well. We'll be discussing how we can formulate these uh, problems and how we can solve them using Python, using Excel, as well as using a dedicated software package uh, called Ample. Um, these um, linear and integer programs are extremely common nowadays in industries, in various industries. They are used um, whenever you, for example, um, Whenever you buy an airline ticket or book a hotel room, you might wonder why do the prices fluctuate all the time? That's uh, due to these optimization techniques. 
you might wonder um, how how your public utilities are being serviced, uh, served, uh, such as um, your um, who who decides uh, which vehicle collects your trash from home, or who decides how to best route your mail. How does Amazon does its uh, logistics? All those things are covered by optimization models, which. Um, uh, the theory of which we're going to uh, discuss in module five. Now, the last bit, uh, which uh, is very important, is the capstone experience that we have, which is the capstone project at the end. Uh, there you will um, have the choice to either bring your own analytics project um, and uh, solve it with the support of the team, or to use, uh, or to um, have a crack at one of the predefined case studies that we have uh, in store for you there. Uh, so the capstone project, the idea there is this will bring all your learning together. You are going to use the various things that you have learned from the different modules together in one single coherent project to, uh, to, uh, to come to basically to understand the end-to-end -end process of being given data in the business problem and bringing it to a conclusion that is of managerial relevance. Um, if we could go to the next slide, I've already mentioned this. Examples and case studies will be very important throughout our course. And so um, it's our conviction that one learns really concepts best for realistic examples, because if you, if you have seen a realistic convincing example, this is something you will still remember months, sometimes years from now, uh, much more so than if I would bombard you with some theory and theorems and proofs, uh, which we're trying to avoid here in this course. So as a result, uh, the material that we are going to present you has a healthy dose of case studies ranging from a recommender system for an online music platform to a production planning problem, a supplier sourcing problem, a capital investment problem. I think we have a problem on personal scheduling, etc. So really a wide range of different examples that you will be seeing. Um, and that brings us to the next slide, which I think will be covered by Mari or Russell? Yes, thank you, uh, Professor Wolfram, for, for being here with us again and for taking us through that detailed module by module overview of what students will learn in the course. So thank you for being with us. Um, I'm just gonna wrap up a few quick details and then we'll get to those questions and answer as many of those as we can. So we've got about, uh, we've got plenty of time to get through those questions. So if you haven't already put something in the Q&A box, um, now is your chance to do that. Professor Wolfram is going to uh, be with us on the, on the call until the very end, um, getting as many of those questions answered as possible. So now's your chance to really interact live and, and see what it's like to, um, to have that live interaction experience with uh, Professor Wolfram Wieseman. All right, so on your screen here, you see the program certificate. This is a sample copy of what that completion certificate looks like. You'll see the heading here um, right across the top, Imperial College Business School Executive Education. Um, so this is a credential from Imperial um, that really showcases your learning in this course and showcases the hard work um, and effort that you've put in. You can post this certificate on your LinkedIn page. You can write about it on your resume. Um, and again, it really, it really showcases your expertise in this area. Um, so we wanted to give you an idea of what that digital certificate looks like there. Um, if you're wondering about next steps, uh, we've provided for you some details here. Um, the application deadline for this course is September 9th, and the course starts on September 10th. Um, so you just have a couple of weeks, um, about nine, nine days or so, to, uh, to get those application details sorted. Um, so the thing that you'll want to do next is, um, in the chat box, you'll notice our program support team um, is, it has posted a clickable link. So if you open up the chat box, you'll see a small hyperlinked, uh, a clickable hyperlink that you can, that you can click on there. Um, the screen itself, you can't click on, so find it there in the chat. And that'll take you over to the registration page and you'll put in your contact details, your name, uh, email address and phone number. And the very next thing that will happen is a member of our program advising team will reach out to you. So a one on one real live person will give you a call um, and there will be your program advisor that you will work with from now until September 9th until that application deadline. Your program advisor is going to be able to answer any of the course policy or logistical questions. So questions about 
assignment deadlines, um, the, the assessment criteria, uh, what happens if I'm late with an assignment, questions about the program fees and flexible payment options, um, or any other course policy and logistical questions. Perhaps you're wondering uh, the schedule of the course. Those kinds of questions your program advisor is best positioned to answer for you. Um, so get yourself a program advisor. It's a very useful resource as you try and figure out um, whether or not this course is going to be a good fit. Uh, they have a lot of really valuable insight to offer in terms of those course policy and logistical questions. Um, so make sure and click on that uh, link, get a program advisor. Your program advisor will also be providing you with copies of today's recording and, and a copy of today's slide presentation as well. Um, so we promised you at the beginning, we would let you know how you get those copies. Um, get a program advisor. They're, they're going to be able to give you all of the information that you need as we approach that start date of September 10th. Um, okay, so next up, uh, questions and answers. So we're going to turn the mic over to all of you, our participants who have joined from all over the world. Um, go ahead and ask your questions and we will go through and get as many of those answered as possible. While you have Professor Wiesem in here, it's a really great time to ask those content related questions. So questions related to the pedagogy, the program design, the content, um, uh, Professor Wiesem will be able to answer those for you. We also have Russell Miller here with us um, from Imperial. So if you have questions about the larger program offerings, um, other types of courses, I saw a question about the larger master's program. We might start with that one. It's been upvoted several times. Um, Russell's gonna be with us to get those questions answered there. Um, so without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and open up the session to our question and answer. Um, we've got lots of time. I think the, the first question here, it's now been upvoted seven times, I think for you, Russell, um, and, and maybe uh, Professor Wiesman, you can add a little bit as well um, to your knowledge, but what's the difference between this program as a standalone course and that full master's uh, scope? Uh, the detail level, what are some of the other differences? If I'm, if I'm a participant and I'm trying to consider, should I start with this course and then go into the master program? Um, could you give us a little bit more information about the distinctions between the two? Yeah, sure. Thanks, Marianne. It's a great question. And um, I'll give you the high level and actually perhaps bring in um, Wolfram just to kind of fill in some of the details um, on this too. So, so this program, the, uh, the online uh, business analytics and data decisions program, it's primarily designed for an executive audience, so for working professionals who are keen to um, you know, increase their depth of, of knowledge in, in this particular field um, and apply um, pretty much straight away you know, the learnings that they get from, from the program. So it's a 16 week program, it's intensive, um, four to six hours per week um, is typically what we say, although if you wanted to do more and you, you have the time to read around some of these um, uh, areas of content that, that Wolfram and, and Alex um, build into the program, then you know, um, maybe put aside a little bit longer. Um, but essentially, it's a program that's designed for you to fit around and um, your, you know, your working life and apply those concepts um, straight away. It has a very practical focus uh, to the content material. The MSc um, has a, yeah, I would say, and Wolfram, um, jump in and correct me if I'm wrong here, but my perspective on the differences is that, is that the MSc has a is, uh, perhaps goes into somewhat more detail around some of those key areas um, and you spend more time and delve uh, somewhat deeper into the academic underpinnings of some of these concepts. Um, although having said that, that program is also the MSc is also very, very practically focused too. Um, Wolfram, would you um, jump in and just comment? I mean, you, you're obviously involved as the, as the course director on the, the MSc and, and you know, lead this online program too. So you know, beyond that kind of fairly high level, you're probably better placed to, to kind of comment on you know, what some of the fundamental differences are. Thanks a lot, Russell. Yeah, no, you're spot on, actually. Um, the scope is the same. The, 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 uh, the, uh, the objectives are the same. What we want to do is we want to give you a combination of very practical approaches to solving analytics problems in real life, um, underpinned by rigorous foundations, because we don't want, no matter whether you are an executive or whether you have uh, started work only a couple of years ago, um, or whether you just came out of your studies, um, 
what we what we want you to do is we don't just want you to um, to uh, understand how to use a method, but also to understand why a method works. That's the same uh, across uh, both courses, our online course as well as the master's program. But of course, uh, if you think about it, this online course is a four month course. We expect you to work four to six hours per week on this course. Um, our master's program at Imperial College is a 12 months full time course. Our Students typically work about 60 hours. I would expect them more or less uh, on, the, on the material per week. Um, so clearly our, um, our course at Imperial goes further into, into that. But basically what we, what we try to do is we try to look at all the program that we offer at our master's program and we thought about what are the most important bits. Uh, if we have to bring down a 12, uh, 12 month full-time program to a four months part-time program, which bits would we use? And uh, voila, that's the, that's a program that we basically came up with. Right, and that, that sort of answers another question that we have here from Johan Johar, who he says he's been admitted into the global MBA program for 2020, 2022. Um, and in the electives, business analytics is one of the modules. So he was wondering how this program is separate or, or you know, from the, from the larger group there, so. Uh, congratulations, Johar, for being admitted into the program. Good to have you with us. Um, so another question that's been upvoted a couple of times here is from Alina Tang. She's wondering how detailed is the Python uh, premier course? Are you able to use Python after completing this course? Yeah, uh, let me, uh, let me uh, try to answer this. Um, as well. And um, so the Python part is covered by my colleague Alex. He's really a Python pro. I, um, I, I know enough of Python to get by, but I would certainly not be the right person teaching you that part of the course. Um, <laughs> how, how, how much in depth do we go into uh, Python? Well, the answer is it often to really become like a pro in a computer language, whichever language that is, can take quite a while more than four months. But what we will do is throughout this course, we will give you solid foundations in Python that get you started. You will be able to solve data science projects with the, with the knowledge that you have. You will be able to apply support vector machines, k-nearest neighbor methods, clustering techniques to data sets, load data sets, um, analyze data sets, visualize data sets, all of those things you will learn. Um, through a combination of two things, by the way, uh, the three weeks primer, which is fully focused on Python, but then afterwards, uh, throughout the rest of the course, we will be using Python every week in assignments again as well. So you will get solid foundations that put you into a very good starting position, a starting position that will allow you to solve real life problems using Python, but it is always obviously more to learn and we will provide you with resources as well should you should you wish to do so and if we could carry that forward just a little bit elena asked a follow-up question you know uh, what can i do next so after this course if i want a more in-depth knowledge in the field um, i don't know if you if you can speak a little bit it sounds like elena you're really hoping to get that python uh, locked in so um what are some of those resources and opportunities for participants who want to carry the learning forward Great question. So, uh, so here's the thing, right? The, the purpose of this course is to give you a broad overview of what is happening in the analytics space. That was our intention. We wanted you to see, to, to give you a coherent picture of the analytics space nowadays, which is quite challenging because there are a lot of things happening. So of course, based on what you learn in this course, there are several possibilities to follow up with more detailed courses afterwards. So one um, a very good opportunity is to learn Python further. There's excellent literature that we will be referring you to. Um, there, there are uh, plenty of online courses as well, ranging all the way from free courses that you can, uh, from free YouTube videos uh, that you can watch to, um, to paid courses that of course then come with better support and with assignments that are, that are marked for you and feedback uh, that is given, et cetera. So Python is certainly one area that you could 
uh, develop further afterwards. Um, another one is machine learning, right? You can go into more details of machine learning. Um, as I mentioned before, I have a follow-up course in Perl uh, machine learning for decision making. That's um, in my view, a very good uh, choice. But um, if you look at the Emeritus course catalog, there are also excellent courses from other universities specifically designed for machine learning. Um, another aspect that we are uh, that we're discussing quite well in this course, but of course there is also more things to learn there is um, is uh, prescriptive analytics or operations research slash optimization. Um, again, there are there are follow up courses, free ones and paid ones that one could look into afterwards. What I would suggest is. Um, if you were to take this course, get in touch with Alex and me and, uh, and let us know what you're interested in. And we can certainly provide you with further references on follow-up material that we think would be uh, suitable. Great, thank you for that, that offer, Professor Wiesman. Mm -hmm. So we have a question from an anonymous attendee that kind of folds nicely um, with, uh, with another question. So I'm gonna marry the two here for you, but uh, Professor Wiesman, if you can speak a little bit about the, the course in terms of its technical focus versus business focus. So an anonymous attendee is wondering, you know, which, which is it, technical or business? It sounds like it's more of the uh, technical focused course with technical terms. Um, could you elaborate a bit on that? And then we have another question. Um, that folds together with this. Is this is this right for someone who's in like an, a business developing role, um, or is it is it mainly a technical based course? So if you can speak a little bit about that, um, I think it would help provide some clarity for participants. So that's a very good uh, question, and it's uh, not an entirely easy question to answer. We. Um, well, we try, you're right, Marie, um, on, the, on the range of courses that are being offered on business analytics, I would say our course is more towards the technical side. You will find other courses in the Emeritus Catalog that are more on the business side. Um, Imperial is known for, for being kind of a, a technical university has, uh, has strong roots in its engineering and, uh, and uh, math departments. But um, that said, what we're trying to do here is, in this course, you will not learn theory for theory's sake. Whatever we do in this course is going to be motivated by practical problems. You see real life case studies of companies um, and that face certain problems and we'll try to see how can we use analytics to actually solve these problems. Along the way, what we're trying to do is we're trying to understand not just how we can apply methods, but also why the methods work. This is not going to be in the form of a math course. There are no theorems and proofs in this course, right? Uh, but what we try to do is we try to give you the intuition. Um, for example, if you use a support vector machine, um, you, you can use a support vector machine with two commands in Python. Uh, I don't, we don't need to spend a week on support vector machines to understand how to type the two commands in Python. However, I believe knowing those two commands in Python does not bring you that much further. You need to really understand how you need to get an intuition for what does a support vector machine? Why does it work and in which applications does it not work? So there is going to be a bit of a technical element in there that we bring in there, always kind of geared towards um, the applicability and practice. So in my view, these two things go kind of hand in hand. Great. Um, we have a, a couple of comments and questions related to the course fees. Um, and one of those questions uh, I, I'd like to jump in on here, it's from an anonymous attendee. Are there considerations for getting these programs uh, uh, as, a, as a training package from your employer or from your organization? Um, and, the, and the short answer to that is, is yes, uh, there, there are available options for you if you're coming in with an organization um, uh, to come through and, 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 and have that be covered by your organization, have the fees for the course be covered. Um, so that, that kind of question can really be best answered by your program advisor. So if you're looking for details about how to speak with your organization or, or perhaps how to collect a group um, and, and bring them into this course as part of a larger training package from your HR department, um, your program advisor will be able to help you uh, to iron out those details. Um, so those kinds of questions are really great 
for program advisors. If you haven't already done so, click on that link in the chat and go over and get a program advisor because they're really going to be able to help you um, determine you know, how best to pay those fees, different ways, flexible payment options, um, ways you might be able to speak with your organization about having the course be covered as part of your, your training benefit. Um, so all of those are, are really great things to speak with a program advisor about. Um, while we have a uh, Professor Wiesman here, I want to keep our Q&A um, more focused around the content of the course. We have another question. It's been upvoted once, um, and it's related to the cloud platforms. This is from an anonymous attendee. Are we using any cloud platforms to have a real-life example case studies in combination with Excel? So, for example, Amazon, Google Cloud, Microsoft Azure. Um, can you speak a little bit about that for us, Professor Wiesman? Absolutely. So, um... I'm not entirely sure that I uh, that I get the question correctly. So let me answer in two ways. So first of all, um, we are uh, perhaps Russell uh, can speak a bit about the platform, the technology platform that we're using to um, to deliver the program, uh, which is our award-winning um, executive education or our award-winning edtech uh, platform. At Imperl, uh, what we are going to be using um, as tools to solve case studies um, as part of this course, and this also relates to another question that was being made, uh, being asked uh, in the Q and A as well, is we're using a variety of different tools. We're going to be using Excel, Python as well as a tool called Ample to solve uh, these analytics problems. All of these, um, so, so Excel, Excel costs a small amount of money, but um, if you don't have access to Excel, we can guide you to alternative free software that you can use as well for the purposes of our course. Um, Ample, uh, Python is free, and Ample has a free uh, demo version which we use throughout the course. So the software that we're going to use um, is state-of-the-art software that companies are using in real life to solve these problems, and all of the software will be either available for free or be substitutable with free software. Now, in terms of the delivery, Russell, would you uh, please uh, tell us a bit about the delivery of the course? Yeah, sure. Thanks, Wolfram. Um, so, the um, the, the program uh, is uh, hosted effectively on um, our uh, online learning platform, which has been developed um, originally developed actually by in Imperial um, a few years back, um, and underlies all of our online teaching and learning, whether it's executive education or whether you uh, subscribe to a, a you know, full-time master's program at Imperial Road that is online or our MBA, our global online MBA, for example. So the platform is identical. Um, it's where you'll go to, um, to uh, see Wolfram and, and Alex in terms of the, the pre-recorded material is all hosted on, uh, on the platform on the hub. Um, all of the interaction that you'll have through um, uh, with, with each other and learning facilitators is, is all kind of in the same place um, you know, on the platform too. So all you need to be able to access the program um, from a technical perspective is uh, a good broadband um, connection uh, and a laptop or other device. So um, you can use a range of different devices, tablets, kind of desktop PCs, even your phone uh, to access some of the content. So. There shouldn't be any technical reasons why you can't access the platform. Um, in most, uh, if you're on the webinar today, the, uh, the chances are you will have all of the technology you need to be able to get the most from the program. Uh, I think the thing that's different about uh, at the Imperial uh, platform, which is a proprietary um, Imperial tool, um, is the fact that it enables us to interact with each other, with our faculty members, with learning facilitators um, in, in a much more collaborative way than uh, potentially other um, platforms that, that schools um, use around the world. So um, it has all of the best functionality uh, that enables you to collaborate effectively, um, get your questions answered, uh, you know, work with our faculty members um, directly and doesn't require any sophisticated or paid for um, kind of uh, application uh, to get the best out of it at all. Also, you know, wherever you are in the world, we often get chances, uh, questions um, around, can I access, do I need a VPN, for example? Um, we have students from all over the world, uh, from Asia, North America, um, Europe. Um, also, uh, in terms of security, single sign-on, uh, and things like that, 
um, the platform's very flexible in, in terms of those as well. So you shouldn't have any kind of security uh, challenges if you want to access the platform from a from a work computer, for example, um, although it's probably wise to check with your IT department if you have any uh, doubts or questions. So it's a great platform and um, you know we're um, I think one of the key things um, around Imperial Executive Education programs is that we don't skimp on the technology. So this is very powerful technology that, that underpins not just executive education programs, but our master's programs uh, you know, that uh, Wolfram's talked about in terms of you know, online and campus-based programs too. If you have any more specific questions, then, then um, you know, feel free to, to reach out and, and contact me directly. And um, I'm happy to answer those too. Great. I think that that covers another question here from Nassim Matar. You know, are there any other tools that we need uh, to pay for, or are they free and licensed? And, and I love what what Russell said. If you're here with us right now on the session, then you probably have everything you need in order to um, get up and running with the course here. So, um, so that was a really great framing. Um, so a question here for you, Professor uh, Wieseman, from an anonymous attendee um, who is an executive level or has more than 18 years of experience. Um, it's, uh, he, he, he or she refers to themselves as a senior worker. Um, so uh, if, if you can speak, it, it sounds like this attendee is concerned about the applicability of all of this um, very interesting stuff. Like, is it really going to apply to the work um, in the organization that they are a part of? Um, so can you speak about how the course was designed to, um, to fit the needs of perhaps newly, uh, new beginners, uh, first starting out in your career through mid-career all the way through uh, senior level executives and, and others? Um, how was the course uh, designed to span across these different years of work experience? This is great, yeah. Um, that's a very good question, and I'm, I'm happy that it's being asked. I think uh, nowadays analytics is really a topic that we cannot, that we can no longer just kind of put into specific departments, right? It's no, it's no long, we're no longer living in a time where we could say, okay, analytics is something that our analytics group is focused with. Um, this is something we don't need to worry about, let's say, at a senior, at a more senior level, perhaps at a, at a board level or the senior management level. I don't think this is possible anymore. In most businesses that I've seen um, nowadays, analytics is or is becoming an issue that is of concern right to up to the right up to the board level. So I think it is great to see here that we have also um, a very senior colleagues that are interested in. Uh, in the course, because I think you will draw a lot of value out of this, even if you're saying, even if you're saying, well, maybe I'm not going to later on get my hands uh, dirty myself with coding uh, things in Python. Uh, there might be other people that are doing that for me. I think it is very important that you still understand what are the <clears throat> What are, the, what are the benefits that can be reaped from uh, analytics and what are the assumptions that all these analytics methods are being based on, right? So really to, to, get, to get an understanding what can and cannot be done uh, with analytics is very important so that you can give guidance to, uh, to the employees in your company as well. Uh, so I think um, we, we tried, um, given that this is an executive level uh, education course, we tried to, um, to design the course that, uh, so that it gives benefits to both, uh, let's say, uh, younger in terms of seniority employees all the way up to very senior employees um, by making sure that you learn what the methods are and how they work. Um, uh, which, which is important for all uh, levels, but at the same time to also give you uh, a, a more detailed understanding of Python, which is particularly uh, great, I guess, for, for, for more junior uh, level uh, attendance. Um, we had at the beginning of the session today, we had a, a, a chat come in from Ezer. He said he was hoping to learn more about how uh, he and his colleagues will be able to work together collaboratively. So other participants, um, so as you think about that peer network, um, it does it spans across those years of work experience from beginners to mid-career to those of you with 20, 25 years of experience or more. Um, it also spans across geographies. So again, if you were with us at the beginning, you heard me call out all of the different geographies where you're coming in from. 
um, and finally across industries as well. Um, so you're representing industries across the gambit um, from financial services to retail, education, you name it. Um, so as you think about working together collaboratively, you truly have a diverse cohort of peers to learn from. So you're learning from those that are just starting out in their careers and those just starting out in their careers are learning from those of you with um, more senior level experience. Um, so a lot of diversity there. Um, could you speak a little bit about how these peripheral supports are folded into the program? We have another question here from um, Arison about handouts and reading materials or supplemental supports for understanding the core subject. So not only among the peer group and your ability to speak with one another for supplemental support, but also in terms of tangible handouts or reading materials. Um, are there ways that students can kind of beef up if they want to um, as they go through this material? Absolutely, so there will be handouts uh, that will be uh, uh, made available to you. Uh, there will also be references to various textbooks all the time where we say, okay, you want to learn more about this particular topic or you want to see it again in a different way, um, please have a look here and there. Um, also very important, um, you might, uh, there, there was a question somewhere else, why should I pay um, uh, over $2,000 uh, for a course when I see elsewhere uh, data science courses being offered uh, for free. The, the key difference here is really the support that you are being given, right? Um, you're going to have several live sessions with both Alex and me. Um, where we're going to solve problems together. We'll actually let you choose which problems we're solving together. There will be some kind of voting mechanism. And uh, in those live sessions, that's your time to ask your questions to us directly and we'll happily respond uh, uh, to all of them. Uh, there is a very strong support team from Emeritus side as well um, to, to help you make sure that you really grasp everything. Um, there is actually throughout the throughout the, uh, the course, there will be nine assignments and a capstone project. You are required to hand in seven out of the nine uh, assignments, which are going to be marked by people, right? This is not just an algorithm that spits out a number immediately after you've done that. Uh, so, so there's a lot of um, there's a lot of support there to to make sure you get the most out of the time that you uh, that you spend. Great, and and that your your comments there just answered a few questions. We have somebody wondering about the assessment criteria and how it's graded. And so as you know, as you said, you have a live person who are marking your assignments um, and keeping track of them. Uh, we we also have a question here about. Um, a lot of logistical based questions about whether or not the course is recognized by the UK Ministry of Education, uh, you know, or, you know, uh, another question here that's sort of logistical in nature is, um, is related to, you know, the tools that can be alternative functionalities. These are, these are really great questions for, uh, you know, will we get membership in an online library? Uh, so your program advisor is going to be able to answer some of these questions for you. So be sure and click on that link. It's been posted again for you in the chat um, for some of those detailed logistical and course policy type questions. Um, a quick one for you, Professor Beesman. I'm just aware of the time here. Um, we've got about three minutes left to our session, but I think it's an um, important distinction to make. So we have a question here about um, uh, R versus Python. Could you tell us a little bit about uh, whether or not the course is using R at all or, or what the what students should be focusing on there? Yeah, thank you. Um, that also, by the way, um, links to two other questions. There is a question about Python. Does Python help with data analysis and visualization? And it was an earlier question which has disappeared, which was about uh, uh, SPSS and uh, related software. So <clears throat> we, um, we had long discussions, Alex and I, to think about which software packages we um, include in this course. Uh, since we were designing the course from scratch, we really had a free choice here. And uh, our choice for Python when it came to data visualization and analysis, as well as Excel, Ample, and Python for, um, for the machine learning and optimization parts, uh, were made out of good reason. For, uh, and the reasons are the following. So <laughs> if you have to choose one single language for analytics, Python would be my personal choice any day. 
There are good other software packages, but they all, in my view, come with some restrictions. So one classical example is R. Um, I'm sure you can do most of the things in machine learning also very well with R. But R has its roots in statistics, in the statistics community, and that shows. Um, you will find certain things just cumbersome to do in R. First of all, the machine learning capabilities are by far not as well developed in R as they are in Python. And secondly, when it comes to optimization, so the part of prescriptive analytics, that is virtually non-existent in R, whereas we have excellent tools in Python uh, available for that. So on a broad level, I can say, whether you learn R or Python, it is a good choice. But if you have learned neither and you're wondering which one to learn, I would say Python is the better choice in my view. That's why we, that's why we chose Python and not R. We will use Python for all aspects from data visualization and analysis to, uh, the, uh, the, uh, to the predictive analytics, to the machine learning part, as well as the prescriptive analytics part. We then complement it with a couple of tools for prescriptive analytics. We use Excel because it's very commonly uh, used in companies. Excel is not a very advanced tool, I have to say, but it is commonly used and we can show you, you can actually do a lot of interesting stuff already with Excel. We then show you Ample as well. Ample is a state-of-the-art tool, which is available in a demo version for us for free, but uh, which is used by the very big companies to solve their most challenging prescriptive analytics problems. Um, those are the problems that are that are being uh, th those are the um, those are the software packages that are being used when airlines schedule their entire group their entire crews worldwide to airplanes, for example. Those are the those are the uh, the tools that are being used by companies um, that uh, uh, that produce consumer goods that sometimes produce tens of thousands uh, of different consumer goods to schedule what is going on in their factories. So um, we hope by the, this choice of software packages, you you get a very good overview of what is needed in analytics from that point of view. Great. Um, I'm just aware of the time here. We're, we've reached the end of our session, so we do have to close out uh, today's session here. Um, so I just want to give you an opportunity, uh, you and Russell both, to, to, to give a final send-off message to our, our participants um, who, who've taken time out of their busy schedules to be with us here today. Maybe Russell, we'll, we'll start with you. Um, any final thoughts that you'd like to leave our participants with? Um, thanks, Marie. Um, really just to say thank you all for, for, for joining today's session. Um, it's great to see so many of you um, I, on the line here today. And um, I think it's, great, it's a great program in terms of the, the diversity and richness that you know, different geographies, sectors, years of experience um, you know, can bring to the program too. This is one of our most popular online programs. It's, um, it's a fantastic program. And um, uh, uh, if you're... Um, thinking about doing some learning over the next few months. I think this, this is a program that should be top of your agenda. Um, so thanks very much for your time today, Wolfram. Thank you, Russell. I uh, fully agree with Russell. I want to say also, um, it's great to see that so many of you are interested in learning more about analytics. Um, of course, I would be particularly happy to see you in, in our course rather than other courses, but uh, more broadly, I think it's an excellent time to learn more about analytics. Uh, I think uh, most people would agree that the importance of analytics will still increase over the next couple of years. Um, so do take, if you have the time, if you can make the time, do take that chance and learn about this important uh, area, be it with our course, be it with another uh, emeritus course or, or completely, completely different course. I think it's an excellent time to, to learn more about this. Um, and uh, with that, I hope to see many of you uh, very soon in uh, discussing the various facets of uh, machine learning and optimization. Thank you. Great, thank you. And uh, for more, for more from Professor Wieseman, uh, join the course. So click on that link, go over to the registration page, get a program advisor, um, and uh, and begin the application process. So we hope to see uh, each and every one of you on September 10th when the course begins. Um, with that, we will close out today's session with a heartfelt thank you to all of you for joining us.
here today. So with that, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good day to all of you from around the globe. We hope to see you very soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.